Hey there guys, it's Amit for DevDreamer and in this video, you're going to learn all about the CSS transform property. Now, the transform property is a rather powerful CSS property that can be used to change or transform elements by rotation, scale, skew and much more. And in this quick video, we're going to take a look at how to use the CSS transform property in detail. If you enjoy videos on web design and development, consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you're notified when the new video is up. So as mentioned then, with the transform property, we can do quite a few things. Let's first take a look at how to rotate elements. So we use the transform property and we simply say rotate. And now we need to specify a degree value. So let's go for, let's go for 45 degrees. And as you can see, this has now rotated the image or the element rather by 45 degrees. We can also transform elements by scale which basically means we can scale the size of our elements to make them either larger or smaller. So any number above one will increase the size of our element and anything less than one will decrease the size of our element. So let's say transform scale. And so if we wanted to double the size of our element, we can just say two or three to increase it by three times the size. To make the element smaller, we can say 0.5, which makes it half the original size or 0 0.3, 0 0.1. So using the scale transform property, we can manipulate the size of our elements very easily. Now you may have noticed scale X and scale Y. So if we just type in scale again, you'll see you've got some other ones here, scale X, scale Y. Using the scale X and scale Y properties changes the scale along the width or height. So for width, we use scale X. So let's just say two, and that increases the size of the width or the X axis. And for the height, we can say scale Y. And as you can see, that scaled it along the Y axis. Let's actually just zoom in. Next, we'll take a look at another transform method called skew. Now we have skew X and skew Y. So let's just get rid of this. In fact, let's just leave that there. And on another line, remember to put our same colon in. We'll say transform skew. So we've got skew X and skew Y. And the skew property does exactly what it's called. It skews the element along either the X axis or the Y axis. So if we say skew X and let's go for 20 degrees, it skews our element along the X axis by 20 degrees and we get this effect here. And we can also skew along the Y axis by saying skew Y and we get this effect here. Another thing that we can do is we can actually move our element around by using the translate property, transform, translate. So we can specify two values here. The first moves our element along the X axis. So we can say 50 pixels going across. As you can see, that's moved 50 pixels across. By default, it moves it to the right. You can also specify 50 pixels to the left by doing minus 50 pixels. Now it's moved 50 pixels to the left. And the second value specifies how much we want to move the element down. So let's go for 100 pixels. So this then has translated or moved our element 50 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down. And of course we can move our elements along the X axis or the Y axis only by using translate X or translate Y. So if you said translate X and in here again, we'll say 50 pixels. Let's move it to the right by 50 pixels. Now, what if we had a case where we wanted to use multiple transforms on the same property? As you can see, as we've specified each new transform property, because our CSS is read from the top down, it actually overrides what's come before it. So these three here are being overridden by this transform property here. Well, CSS does give us a property we can use here, and that is the matrix method. So this is basically a shorthand for doing multiple transforms. So if we want to see what our element looks like by having all of these transforms applied to it, and not just one of them, we can say transform matrix. And as is usually the case with CSS shorthands, there is a sequence and an order that we need to follow. So for the matrix property, the order is, and I'll leave this in the description down below as well, but the order is scale X, and then it's the skew Y property, followed by skew X, then it's the scale Y property, and then finally translate X and translate Y. Okay, so let's go through and, uh, and fill these in and you'll see how using the transform matrix property allows us to apply multiple transforms to the same element. So for scale X then, let's say two, and these values do need to be comma separated. For the skew, we'll just say one for each. We'll set the scale Y to 
2 as well. And then finally, let's move our element along the x axis by 70 pixels. And here we don't actually need to specify the uh, unit property, so we don't need to put px there for pixels. We just simply specify the value. And then finally, for translate y, let's say that we want to move this, um, let's say minus this time, because we want to move this up as opposed to down. Let's say we want to move this up by 200 pixels. Wow, that's uh, way out of the screen. Let's just zoom out. Okay, there it is, all the way up there. As you can see, our element now has all of these transform properties that we've specified with the shorthand matrix property. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot then when it comes to 2D transforms. Let's now take a look at 3D transforms. So the best way to show the difference between the two is by example. So let's set up a normal 2D rotate transform. So let's just comment all of this out here, like so. And I'm going to be using the transition property, which we're going to be looking at in the next lesson. So don't worry for now if you don't know what I'm doing with the transition property. We'll be covering it in detail there. But I'm going to say that on hover, I want to do something. First of all, let's change the cursor to pointer. So on hover, we get this uh, curse icon. And on this, I'm going to specify a transition. Just say all two second linear. And again, don't worry if you don't know what this means. We will be covering it in the next lesson in detail. And what I want to happen on hover is I want to rotate our element. So I'll transform, rotate by 360 degrees. Let's also just set this to zero by default. Let's zoom in a little. So let's see what happens when I hover over our element. As you can see, it rotates our element by 360 degrees. So with a 2D rotate, the element simply rotates around as if it was flat, which is exactly what we would expect. But we can use rotate X and rotate Y to perform 3D transform rotates. So if we change this to rotate X and hover over our element, you'll see now this rotates the element with a 3D transform along the X axis. And of course, we can also do Y as well. This has the same effect, but along the Y axis, which again is a 3D transform. Okay, guys, so as always, I hope you found that useful. Please hit that like and subscribe button down below if you're not already, and hit that bell notification so you get notified as soon as the new video goes up. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.